Hi, welcome to Painting 101 Remastered. Um, during this series, it's probably going to be about maybe four or five episodes, we're going to go back and really talk about paints, brushes, materials to use, different types of techniques and stuff, but not keep it in that two minute format. We're actually going to take our time and explain things a little bit further. So everybody has a good understanding and build a catalog so you can access it at any time on the channel. Now today we're going to be covering probably one of the sore subjects that you can ever have with a painter and that's actually paint believe it or not. People like certain paints for certain types of things and some likes the like their pigments or others like it because of affordability or maybe they just can't afford much and just do whatever they have but when you are painting models paint is almost your most important material that you can have so let's take a look at some of the different types of paint and talk about now, the first bit. type of paint that we're going to talk about is your basic cheapo paint that you can find in any craft store or pretty much just about any department store. Your Craftsman, your um, all-purpose acrylics. These type of brands of paint are very cheap and the coverage is not that good. They're very hard to work with but they can be used to mix with other paints and they do serve a purpose. They're acrylics but the problem is if you try to layer these type of paints because of the poor quality the binding agents aren't that good and they break down easy so say you wanted to use this to paint over as a base underneath a particular model pretty much as you would spray a some primer and you wanted to paint the the primer on unfortunately when you went to go paint over this you would get the colors to mix into each other because it doesn't have that a very strong binding agent and that's why it's such a, a a very cheap paint these normally go like this one particular is $2.99 for this big tub something that you would pay for a little tub of paint a good quality paint about this size these are always good just to use in case you don't have any money but you have to be very careful with them and maybe covering big areas that you are going to or these are good for mixing grays when you're going to actually use a, a gray or these are good mixing agents with with a better quality pay, uh, paint to either bring up the color or lower the color next we're going to talk about the Americana line and you can find these in Hobby Lobby, Joann's um, certain hobby shops, any arts and craft shops these have a better staying power on plastic miniatures and are actually with such a wide range of different colors at a good affordable price at a dollar nine a pot as you can see it's a good size tube and compared to let's just say a citadel you get an awful lot more you almost get double for a dollar a, a, a dollar ten now these are are good solid paints and good beginner paints to find out if you like the hobby if it's something that you want to get into but at times putting it on it can get a little gritty and does need to be sprayed over which we'll talk about different types of sprays that you can put over these are good for smaller cheaper plastics such as a lot of board games um, take like a forbidden stars or um, we can even go into space cadets where you don't want to really use too much of your good good paints you can use your Americanas or if you just want to find out if you even like painting at all you can actually use these the one thing that I always say to, to stay away from with these is their metallics they are very poor and do not cover very well here we have the folk art which you also can find at Hobby Lobby's, Joann's, um, a couple other craft stores. These are the next step up, up from the Americana. And they come in a variety of different colors. And as you can see, they have regular colors, but they have a very strong metallic line. And their metallic paints are 
just a step below Citadel Paints and Valero and Army Builders. These are these are very very excellent, very affordable at about a dollar eighty nine, and you get a heck of a lot more than of course the tubs. If if you are looking to save money and learn and practice your technique as shading and working with metals. It's the type of line that you can just start learning and, and practicing and honing some of the techniques that you may learn. And this is a great line, a fantastic line to do that with. And I, I really suggest that if you can and you can't afford these, these are the best starter paints that you can go with as far as starting and getting into the painting hobby. After that, we go right into the Valero line, and these are some of the best paints that money can buy. Now, at $2.99, very affordable, but you really don't get much as you do, of course, with an Americana or a folk art. These are comparable to a Citadel, which is that goes at four bucks, and but we'll be taking a look at those as well. A full, beautiful line, good coverage you get everything you need and you're able to mix the line they don't have as many variety of colors but being able to mix them and and create and and make different shades these are very very workable another thing that i really really uh, enjoy about valero is the actual bottle itself as you can see it is very convenient where you can just put as much as you need you can put as much as you need and seal it all up. And we'll talk a lot more about that very soon. After that comes the Citadel line, which many consider the granddaddy of all painting. Don't get me wrong, Army Builder makes a great paint set and they're on the same level as Valero. And I believe that all three of them have goods and negatives to them, but they are actually pretty much similar. It really depends on your taste. But there are some variances and there are some differences. First of all, the metallics from Citadel are pretty much second to none. And nobody can touch their washes. Their washes are incredible and make a big difference on a, mo a model. To the point where people call it liquid talent. And they also give you great glazes, which are great for bringing out colors underneath, but giving a good hue of things. A really fantastic line of paints. One of the big drawbacks though is this top. If you're trying to work from the pot itself, well it's kind of hard because it just doesn't stay open as you can see. So trying to get your brush in there and having that thing close up on you can be very frustrating at times. I wish they had something that would open of course and just stay open and as you can see you have a little paint area here where you can take some paint from it but that's not the case so these are very hard to work with you would have to actually take it out and work with it on your palette but as far as quality their metallics and their washes I believe in my opinion are second to none but what happens at the very end when you finish painting your models and your models are completely done and ready to be played with well because they're acrylics people's hands are going to take the paint off is there a way to seal them you betcha matte finish or matte coating is perfect it keeps the colors down and doesn't put a gloss coat over your models but keeps what you painted and the integrity of it and seals it all in these you can get these at any hobby shop. You can get a Krylon. Uh, Citadel makes a great one. I also use the ones that I get at Hobby Lobby. You know, just a, the no-name generic brand. And they work fine. And I have very little to no problem with these at all. What I do is I seal everything. And then it's playable for as long as you want. And the paint will not come off or wear down due to touch and wear. So that pretty much covers just about everything we want to cover with paint this week. Let's go up top and get my final thoughts. Well, there you have it. We broke down every single paint. 
and talked about the highs and lows. The low end paints are very hard and you're going to need a lot of covers to get the color that you want. The medium ranges are good for beginners and to get a good feel and see if you actually want to do painting. Then of course the high end paints, the differences, how you work those pots and, and metallics. Citadel with the great metallics and the great washes but very expensive paints where you can go get the Valero or the Army Builder at $2.99, great paints. And then the high-end paints where you have the Citadels where you have such fantastic metallics and beautiful washes that really enhance your model but really really kind of expensive and high priced and hard to work with with those pots. But also comparable is the Valero and the Army Builders which are beautiful paints but the line isn't as big as the Citadel line. It really, when you start working with those high, those higher end paints, it's where your comfortability is, what you prefer, and also price to some degree. You can also get away with the folk art, which is the middle of the road. It's not a high end paint, but it's not a low end paint either. And very affordable and very workable to practice some of your metallic techniques. And and the Citadel washes go over it beautifully and, and really enhance and very affordable at $1.89 to $1.49. It really where your comfortability is and who you really believe in as far as your paint company. I tend to use all three, all of them. <laughs> I, all, I have different applications for all of them. It depends on the plastics that I work with. That's me. Other people do different things and stay specific with their particular type of paints and that's what works for them. And that's where paint becomes a very, very iffy kind of kind of situation where you have to decide what's going to work for you. And that's why we're doing things this way where you can actually see the different paints, maybe get an idea, maybe try one line or a pot or something. and. Go buy a model down at Hobby Lobby for $10 and try the different types of paints and use that same model until you can get a feel and say this is the paint for me and then tackle your very first or some more of your board game, uh, your, your board game, or tackle some of your board games. Now next week we're going to be going down to Hobby Lobby and we're going to be taking a, taking a look at brushes. Brushes and another controversial subject. There's nylon, there's bristles, there's good bristles, there's bad bristles. Why don't we all go down, take a look, and look at the different types and see the different brushes and how they apply to what you're going to be painting and what the different types of brushes do. We'll be looking at that next week on Painting Miniatures 101 Reloaded. Until next time, I'm Rob Warren. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.